All right, there will be one question from chapter five. Eh? All right. Um, today we're going to look at chapter five, 2D beam and plane flame. So first session, we'll look at two dimensional arbitrary orientated uh, beam element. And then second session, we'll look at rigid plane flame example. Now, what, what is different? Uh, chapter five, what is different compared to the previous chapter four or chapter three? As you can see on your screen here, the beam, the example that we see in previous lecture is always horizontal. Okay, it's always horizontal. Um, and then um, this is the, the previous one, okay? But today, if you compare the red color diagram and the one that on your screen, you are seeing there's an angle, okay? The beam is rotated at a certain angle from X to X point, okay? Observe the diagram. You are having the general or the principal axis, X and Y. And then each element, each beam, has their own axis also. We call it element axis, where in the test or in the exam itself, you will see, I give you some marking X prime. So if you see the marking X prime with the arrow, it means that is the positive direction of the X prime. So what is the purpose of X prime and X? They will measure the angle from X to X prime will give you theta. Okay. Theta measured from x to x prime. Eh? So this is important because later, uh, throughout the first session, you deal with anger. You deal with theta. Okay. All right. So a little bit mixture of what you learn when you deal with the global uh, trans uh, transformation from global to uh, uh, from element to global. Uh, Axis that you learn maybe in chapter three, when you learn about the the changes of axis, but today we look at beam. Okay, we look at beam element. So just to recall, when we speak the word local, it means if you look at the chart, we look at the beam itself with the axis of x prime and y prime. Uh, today you start looking at y prime. Uh, X prime and Y prime. If it means local, it means the beam itself. And then another word that we will keep repeating is the global axis. Global axis means the, the, the reference axis X and Y. Okay, X and Y. All right. So we're going to show you a, li a little bit of derivation steps. Uh, you can go back to these uh, slides uh, later. All right, I'll go a little bit fast for the derivation steps. Uh, okay, important is how you apply the equation. Okay. All right. Now, uh, this is recall what we learned in previously when we convert from local to global. Okay, this is what we learned in the previous chapter. Okay, with the sine and cos. And then for beam element, you need to convert from local to global also. Okay, now for beam element, you know that your beam element is having displacement. Your beam element displacement consists of V and rotation, right? Okay, maybe V1, rotation one, V2, rotation two, right? We keep repeating this one in previous chapter, okay? So if you make some modification on the uh, orange color equation with the prime, so uh, for beam element, your displacement, you're looking at V1, rotation one, V2, rotation two, and you need a conversion. You need a converter factor or constant value uh, to convert between element and global dimension. Okay, you need this one. 
So just a just a, a a small small quiz or small question for today is that so the T here we call it transformation matrix. So can you guess the form or the uh, or the structure of the T transformation matrix? Now just to give a hint, this one we have four times one, meaning four column. Uh, four row, one column. This one is um, six times one. How do we balance this matrix equation? What is the form of transformation matrix that we need? Okay, I give you maybe 10 seconds to think about it. What is the form or what is the structure of transform matrix matrix that you see here. What is the blue color matrix structure? Okay, on the left, I give you some hints. On the left, the structure is four times one, means four column times one. The right, right hand side is six times one. So how to balance this matrix equation? What is the structure of the matrix? Ashma, can you try to answer? What is the structure of this T matrix? We need what? Ashma, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you try to answer this question? What is the structure? How to balance this matrix? Wait, sir. This is important. Huh? This 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 question will help you to check your answer during uh, your exam or test, whether you get the correct formula. Ashma, you understand, right? When I write four times one, you understand, right? What does it mean? Yeah, I, I know it's about the the metric form. Yes, yes. So what is T? By looking by looking at the red color note here. Okay, you have four times one. Then you have question mark times question mark, and you have a uh, six times one. Ashma, do you know how to solve this one? No, really, sir. Okay, Chia, are you able to solve this one? What is the question marks? What is the form of the matrix? T matrix. Sue, what is the matrix? What is the structure? What is the form of T matrix? Uh, one times four. One times four. Okay, this is Sue's answer. Brian, what is the structure of T? I'm not sure. You're not sure, okay. Now I'm showing you a very quick uh, a very strict, uh, strict method. Huh? Um, okay, 
how you get 4-1. Actually, there's a magic, num uh, magic steps. How you get 4-1 is a combination of two metrics here. First, you link the middle number with middle number. This middle number must, must be the same. So this one must be 6. 6 times 6, you cancel. Then the second magic bridge, you link the first and the last number. First and the last number must be the same as your answer on the left. So your answer on the left is 4, 1. So this one must be 4. 4 times 1 become the answer. Then to make this matrix balance, the the last mat the must last matrix uh this one is a uh, column must be the same as the second matrix your row. Do you see the green color handout here? Do you understand what we are trying to do? So the answer for this one is four times six. Ashma, you get the idea how we come up with four times six? Uh, can you repeat, sir? Okay. Our form here is four times one, right? This one is four times one, right? You understand yeah. this one? Hmm. Equal to something that we do not know. Question mark times question marks. Then we times another matrix with this. This one is what, Ashma? What is the form of this one? Six times one. Okay, six times one. Now the magic steps is, is quite direct or simple. First, you know that this is the first matrix. This is the second matrix. What you do to balance the first step is this one must same as this one. This one must same as this one. So what is this number? Ashma, what is this number? Six. Six. Then another combination. This one times this one must same as this one. So what do you get this one? Your left hand side is four times one, right? Uh, then the the question mark times one must equal to left hand side. So what is this number? Four. four. So the answer for this T matrix form is four times six. Ashma, you understand now? Yes, sir. Mm. Brian, do you understand why this one four times six? So I'm still a little bit confused. You confuse, huh? Okay, I repeat one more time. Brian, what is the form of this matrix? One, sir. We don't know about this one, but matrix consists of two uh, number, row and column. Brian, what is this number? What is this form? Six one. Six one. Now, how to get the question marks? The step is quite easy. To balance the whole matrix, this matrix times this matrix must balance. So how to balance? The first indicator, this one must same as this one. So what is this number, Brian? This must same. Six. So six. Second indicator, this one times this one is same as this one. So what you have here? Four. No, what, what is the form that you have here? Four times one, right? Yes. So something times one equal to four times one. So what is this? 
What is this question mark? Say that again. Something that is not so. This one. You know, you, four times one. Right? The answer top four times one. The second red color lines, when you take question mark times one, must equal to four times one. So what is question marks? Four times one equal to question marks times one. What is question marks? Four, sir. Four. So question mark is four. So the structure of T is four times six. Oh. Do you see it now? Yes. Okay. Chia, do you understand? Chia, are you there? Chia Wing Fong, are you there? Yeah, tell what what happened to your mind now? Nah? Okay, never mind. All right, so those uh cannot get it, go and listen to the lecture because uh, I repeat more than two or three times already. Okay, so if you do the same, you'll get four times six structure. Okay, now if you repeat the same, you do the same uh principle like what you did. Okay, you can use the concept that you learned above you can develop the one that on the right hand side okay so this is your homework you try to prove this one okay so for example you have u and v here but however for beam structure right at these slides you don't see v but later v will come out huh so it's another slides this is your homework. Huh? Try to go and understand how to get this matrix. Okay, this one is your advanced mathematics uh, skill, right? So you fill in the blanks that you see here at, with zero. You get the uh, beam element uh, matrix uh, equation. Then after that, what happened to the, so this is your T matrix. So you extract this T matrix, T matrix equal to this one. Memorize this one, standard already. Okay, T equal to minus SC1 minus SC1 and then the rest is zero. So I put the T matrix on the left. So how do you obtain the global element system matrix? In your test or exam later, you write this one, you get one to two marks. It's the standard equation. So K equal to T transpose K prime T. Sue, are you there? Yes. So my question is, if you look at this equation, when you see prime, what does it mean? Does it mean local or global dimension? Uh, local. Local, uh, Beam. Yes, correct. So if you see a prime means it's a local. Uh, so no, do not have prime one is a global. So it's actually is a conversion between global and local. Okay. So this one you learned before K prime equal to this one on the left hand side corner. You learned this one before, right? If you don't understand this one, go back to the previous uh, lecture video. Uh, this one I think in chapter three, right? K prime. What is K prime? Okay. So you do the transformation, meaning if you follow this mathematics uh, equation, T transpose means you transpose this whole thing. Uh, if you don't know what is T transpose at this stage, you better go and open up your advanced mathematics uh, textbook. Right? Uh, T transpose, or go to appendix uh, that I put into the uh, Moodle. There is an appendix there. Go and look what is transpose. All right, if you do T transpose times the K prime, we did this one, and then times the transpose again, uh, T, uh, not transpose, times the T matrix again, you will get this uh, look like very complex, but standard form. Huh? So your K equal to EIL cube 
in exam, if you write this whole jumbo matrix, you will score one to two marks also. So this one, one to two marks. This one also one to two marks. Three marks, eh? If you are if you are solving a uh, a beam with the angle, or we call it a uh, uh, orientated beam element. Okay. So the rest you can read from my slides. Then if you compare the above and bottom diagram, what have what is different compared to the uh, top and bottom is I add in the force. So if you can see here, you are having F1, F1X, M, F2Y, F2X, and M. If you compare to the above diagram. Now what in this case you are having the F1X here? Wow, okay. Because with anger, you know that when you have a vector, V, you can convert to X and Y axis. All right, you can convert this one to VX and VY, for example, all right? So you're having a, a degree of freedom with this U, V and a rotation angle. So with the uh, orientated beam element, uh, you have a uh, you have to recall that what what you learned previously, F equal to K D. All right, and you will for beam you are seeing this kind of uh, matrix. For beam you are seeing F one X M one Y M M two X M two Y M times the K prime and the displacement. Basically, we are still repeating F equal KD. But for beam, as you compare to the left-hand side diagram, you are having F1Y, F1X, and M. So that's why you're seeing the F component like this. Displacement is what you have, V1, rotation one, and your U1, which is here. U1, okay. So in the diagram on the left corner also you, you can see U1, V1, and M1. So this one you put in the D column. Okay. Then you combine the K matrix that we derived just now. The K matrix that we derived just now, we arrive at um, uh, a complete matrix. The blank space is zero. The, the blank space is zero. You get C1, C2. The C is C1 is AE divided by L. A is area. E is a modulus yang or elasticity constant value. L is the length of the beam. C2 is EI divided by L cube. Okay. All right. So this also standard. Okay. The standard steps. So you put in the C1, C2 and the complete one, you will see um, this uh, jumbo matrix. But again, it's a standard form already. Okay, it's a standard form. All right. So we can see your K equal to this jumbo matrix here with the C1 and C2. C1 equal to E divided by L, C2 equal to E divided by L3. Then we relate to the local one, local global displacement. So D, we need to convert a D prime. We need to convert to something. All right, we need to convert with something. D, all right. Oh, uh, no, sorry. You can see that D prime equal to conversion factor times the global displacement. Don't be scared by all the notation. Uh, it actually is still the same basic mathematics. As, as long as you can you can understand what is this prime mean. And then this one without the prime means global. This one is element. So this one is the, the conversion 
uh, factor. Standard also. So this one, we call it T transpose to convert the local uh, to link up with the local and the global. So you'll see example, one example later on. Huh? You will, then everything will make sense. Okay. So as you can see, uh, we call back the equation for K. K equal to T transpose K prime T. T equal to this one. K prime equal to big jumbo this one. So when we combine, when we do the mathematics, uh, this mathematics K equal to T prime uh, T transpose. K prime T, we will get this very big uh, equation. This equation we call it a rigid plane frame equation. So, so this is a, a rigid plane frame for K matrix. Okay, this equation is important. Uh, it will score you up to four marks in exam. Okay, it's a standard form. Yeah, go ahead. What is your question? No, sir, no question. All right. So, All right. yeah, go ahead. So, uh, in the formula, k equal to t transpose times the k prime, this formula, right? Mm. Are we doing the multiplication form? Mm. And you have to follow this order, right? Yeah, so uh, in exam, you don't need to do the derivation. You only need to write this equation, k equal to t transpose k prime t, and then straight away you write this very big transpose uh, so this end, end day, result for me. Yeah, because that day when I look back at chapter three. Yeah. We have this one, right? Because yes. the, the order you put in the site is different. Then I try to do the I try to derive the equation. Mm, 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 mm. Different. Then I found that you have to follow this order. So may I know why we have to do do like this order? Okay, so this one go back to the one of the slides here. We need to convert. Uh, we need to convert. Hold on. Fine. Okay, this one. Now, uh, because we are converting um, the uh, we are converting the because this all this transpose with the cos and sine is that we are converting we not converting like but we are link between the uh, x prime and x axis because our beam is rot uh, rotated at the set uh, at a certain angle okay maybe the one that you ask is in chapter chapter three right uh chair is it yes sir you are asking me about something i think from here This one, when we link the, when I explain the two axes, how we derive the equation, and then we arrive at. Uh, let me see here. Chia, is this your question from chapter three or chapter yeah, four? It's on the top, the, yeah, I think from, yeah, from here. It's, yeah, this one. So Chia, you, 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 you say that you cannot get, is it? I, I can get how the process go, but I don't understand why the, because uh, we changed the, the, in, I think at this one side that say that we change the inverse to transpose, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe that one we we sort that one out in other lecture. I think this one. You see this one, right? You're asking me about this one, right? 
k equal to k prime t t oh, transpose. Right, right. But in the the slide you showed just now in the chapter five, uh -huh. e transpose is in the front. Oh, you see the, the in in my slides just now, my t transpose I put in the yeah, front. If so, we do the multiplication like this, we can we will not get the cos and sine form. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like that, right? Okay. Um, as long as okay, when you do matrix, uh, when you do matrix, this one. If when you do matrix, no matter you put uh, t transpose in front or back, what is important is the one that I show you just now. Is the form of the matrix must be balanced. For example, if you get uh, two times four. I mean the, the 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 form of the matrix that you get must be balanced. For example, um, six times six. After you do the transpose, if you time the k prime, the k prime must be start with six because this one must be the same. It can be two or four or three, like that. So the end result of this. This one times this one will become six times four. Then when you time this one, when you after you time this one, this one must start with four because this 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 number must be balanced. Then it can be six. So the end results of this mat this this matrix will be six times six. So what if all of them are six times six? Okay. Then, then the end result will, will get six times six. Huh? You can see, uh, this one is like you understand the previous when I explained about the structure, right? So if we put it in different order, if we multiply it in different order, the result will be different, right? Yes, yes, correct. It's only that when you when you put them together, you have to be careful on the 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 form of the structure. Uh, for example, uh. Let's say this one A times B, la, the structure. Then I put this one as C times D. This one is E times F. So the number when you put together, the neighbor must be the same. B, B must equal to C to, to, to proceed with the procedure. So what if all of the mass square matrix? So how oh. do I decide? If all of them is the same size. If all the same, then it's, it's more easier. If you have six times six plus six times six times six times six, right? Then then is it, it meet the, the with the criteria. First criteria, the B must equal to C. So B must equal to C. You pass the test already. Second criteria, this one times this one will give you the result six times six. Right, uh, then you check with the next procedure. Six must equal to one, so it's still back to the procedure one. Six times six equal to six, still agree with the step number one. Step number one is B equal to C. Then you will get six times six as your answer. So if the. I, so yeah. If I follow this rule, all of them are six times six. If I put the K in the front in the first order, the result will be different, right? But it was still, yeah. still apply this yeah. But, uh, yeah, correct. I mean, if you if you put the 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 k prime, for example, k prime is this one. You put in the front, but when you times the now, for example, you take the k prime on the screen here. This one is four times four. Then the t is four times six. Agree, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you take T transpose, what it mean by T transpose? Mean row become column, column become row. So T transpose, the form of T transpose is six times four. So you take T transpose six times four times K prime four times four balance. Four times four. Balance rule number one. 
the middle must same as liver. Then this one times this one. The first set will give you six times four. Then you look back at the transpose. This transpose in the form of six times uh, four times six. This one four times six. So four times six, the first four must equal to four balance. Then the result will be six times six. Do you see now, Chia? Yes. Mm. All right. Important is the, the balance, the, the, the matrix must be balanced at the end. Okay. If not, then you need to modify the structure of the, the, the matrix. Those that missing, you replace with zero. Then you will, you will become a bigger. For uh, okay, that one is another topic lah for mathematics. Okay, but uh, at the end you'll get this equation k equal to e i after you did this uh, multiplication, you will get k equal to e i l and this standard equation. Symmetry means you copy the the top to the right. Okay, this one to here, this one to here, and so on. This one to here and so on. Okay, so. Uh, you'll get this one. So let's let's uh, go for okay. The next one will be so. Just now we stop at rigid plane frame. Let's go for one tutorial question and then uh, we have a short break. Okay. All right. Now uh, this slide is important when you try to solve a rigid plane frame. This K matrix is important for to help you to to solve. OK. Um, when you see cost and sign in the matrix, it means that you are dealing with X to X prime. There's an angle there. Theta, OK, X to X prime. So from the theta itself, you can calculate cost and sign. Important. Eh? This is an important concept. As long as you know what is cos and sine, how do you get cos and sine, and why there's a cos and sine, is because you are dealing with the global axis x and the local axis, the element axis x prime, and you are measuring from x to x prime. Okay. In test, you'll be given these two. Eh? You'll be given x, and you'll be given the element of x prime. So you need to measure the data. Okay. Let's look at one tutorial question and then uh, we we'll go for a short break. Okay. All right. Now, if you look at the screen here, uh, you have a three element. Okay. You have three element, one, two, and three. Element one connecting point one and point two. Element two connecting two and three. Element three connecting three and four. And then you are given the global axis at the on the chart itself. The x is along point one and four. Y is going above from one. Okay, from here. Okay, so y positive going up, x going to the left. And you will be seeing x prime, x prime, x prime. So this x prime is individual. Huh? You tag to, for example, x prime. This one tag to element one. This one x prime tag to element two, x prime this one tag to element three. Don't share the x prime. Huh? Okay. Then the next you have your external forces. External forces, 10,000 Newton at point two. External moment or torque, 5,000 Newton per meter. This is the anticlockwise. So for throughout this module, anticlockwise moment is positive. Okay, and you're given the E value, A value. I value is different. I value element one and three is 200. Element two is 100. Okay, so now I want you to observe the step. The step is, is, is fixed already. Okay, how do we solve this kind of problem? Using the rigid frame analysis. Okay. First steps, 
write the K matrix. K equal to E divided by L, E divided by L times the whole thing, you copy, all right? So this one, these steps give you one to two marks. Okay, first steps, write the K matrix. Next, you solve for the, uh, okay, you solve for the angle. So, do you understand if I say the angle of element one is 90 degree clockwise? Do you understand? Chia, do you understand? Yes. Okay, yeah, so element one, the X prime is here. If you look at this diagram, your angle you are comparing to X. Your angle is always X to X prime. This is your theta. So for element one, the angle is 90 degree anti-clockwise direction. Brian, do you understand the angle? Yes, sir. All right. So first you write the K matrix. Second, you calculate the angle, which is the cos and sine value. What is the cos and sine value, All right? So cos 90 equal to, of, you, of course you can do the trigonometry equation, okay? All right. So of course directly cos 90 is zero, sine 90 equal to one. Okay, first step, K matrix. Second, calculate the cos and sine. The theta is x to x prime. You measure x to x prime. So for element one, theta is 90 degree. This is your x. All right. Now just for a test, what is the angle of element two? Um, let me ask Sue. What is the angle of element two? Zero. Zero, because x to x prime, zero. Huh? Okay, good. Uh, Ashmal, what is the angle for element three? 90 degree, 90 degree counterclockwise. Can you look at the arrow of x prime? Yes. Sir. What does it mean? How do, you how do you, yeah, how do you calculate angle from, you see number three, right? Arrow going down, right? X, right? How you define angle? Angle is X to X prime, right? Yes, sir. Where is your X? Uh, upper side. So you're calculating what? X to X prime, right? You always calculate like this, right? Yeah, this, uh, uh, can we say that uh, 90 clockwise, sir? Uh, no, your angle always you calculate that oh, anti clockwise context. direction. Okay, you always uh, calculate that anti clockwise. You measure from X prime. Of course, you can say you can say you go clockwise 90 degree, no problem. But when you do calculation, you have to understand when you calculate cos and sine later, you have to know how to convert. Lah. Because the angle you calculate for your cos is 270 degree. Understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Right. So that, that is what important. And this also one of the mistakes done by student in the exam. Brian, do you understand why this one angle is 270 degree? Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. Do you understand angle for elementary is 270 degree? No, sir. 270. 270 is where I don't understand. Do you understand? No. No. Okay. Ashma, can you explain to Brian how to get 270 
zero degree. I help you with the diagram. Yeah, uh, the, the, the X bar uh, actually we are measuring from the, uh, the X axis. So from the X axis, if we, uh, what we call it, uh, rotate on, not rotate, uh, we measure it from, uh, from what? From from X axis, uh, if we measure yeah, from X, X to what? X axis. From X to what? X prime. Yes. X to X prime. So Brian, do you see? What what Brian? What is our axis here? X right? Brian, how you measure angle? How you measure theta? From X to X to what? X prime. X prime. So what is the arrow of your element number three? What is the X prime arrow? Going down. So going down. X prime. Where is your X axis? X horizontal on the. How you measure angle? X to X prime, right? Yes. And it must be anticlockwise. You measure from here to here. What is the total angle that you have moved from X to X prime? What is angle here, Brian? 90. So? What is the angle have you moved from here to here? Oh. One, one circle have how, how many degree? 360. Ah. You know this is 90 degrees, so how many degree you have here? You measure from here. 270. The remaining there. Is your X prime. You see, I label some something on the diagram. You measure angle anticlockwise. This is your theta. Do you see it now? Yes. Don't make mis this mistake, ah, Brian. Because this one, this this kind of question is snowballing, ah. You you have one step wrong, the whole question gone already, ah. So you calculate the first step, you write K. Second step, you write cos and sine. After that, you do calculation for each one of the object here. So element one, you calculate what is this one? The, the third step, you calculate 12i divided by L square. You put in the value 12 times 200, L is 120 square. You get this value, 0.17. 167. The next one, you calculate this one. 6i divided by L, you substitute the i and L, you get one value. Then the third uh, value you calculate is E divided by L. You calculate, substitute the value of E and L, you get one value. Okay. Then after that, you you do the calculation uh, once you have 12 i l square 6 i l e l and the cos and sine value you calculate you complete the k value for element one meaning all these numbers you convert to value all these uh, equation inside the matrix you convert to value okay so this is a very important step always check your answer because from here, you're going to snowball to your final answer. You have one value wrong, the whole question gone already. Eh? So for example, this one, you accidentally, you write positive 10. You're going to snowball to your final answer. It means I don't need to mark for the remaining steps already. Okay.
So this question costs you 25 marks total. Just take note, huh? always check your answer. All right, go, I'm going to go very fast. All right. So again, after you have a matrix K, remember to label with your pencil because element one is connecting one and two. So how you write with the ticketing number. So the first one, the point one will give you U1, V1 and rotation one. Point two will give you U2, V2, rotation two. So each point will give you three. Huh? For rigid beam, you no longer see only two, but you see three. Three displacement for each point. U1, V1 and rotation one. So for today lecture, you add in one more parameter. U1. Okay, so same with point two, U2, V2, rotation two. So you have solved for the first element K. This K will cost you one to two marks in exam also. Sometimes three marks for element K. Right, it's quite simple. Huh? Converting from normal calculation, you just need to put them into a matrix form. Then after that, you do it for element two. You do the same. Element two, zero degree, calculate the cost and sign, calculate 12 EI, calculate this one, calculate 6i L, calculate this one E L, then complete the calculation. You get second element K matrix. Remember to issue ticketing number after you do element K matrix. Element two connecting point two and point three. So again, point two will give you U2, V2, rotation two. Point three will give you U3, V3, rotation three. It's important eh? because after this, we're going to superimpose everything into one very big K matrix. Then you do it for element three. Element three is 270 degree or like Ashmal just now. If you do it in Ashmal way, you can use negative 90 instead of 270. Okay, same meaning when you convert to cos and sine. But I will recommend you always use anti-clockwise calculation for angle. All right. So again, you do the cos and sine, then you calculate the three constant value. You calculate 12i l, calculate 6l, uh, 6i divided by l, calculate e divided by l, convert them into matrix form. Then remember to issue the ticket number for the value inside the matrix. Element three connecting three and four. So each point give you three uh, uh, degree of freedom. U3, V3, rotation three, U4, V4, rotation four. So I, do, uh, I think you, you are very good in the superimpose already. Once you issue the ticketing number, you have, you have uh, four point. Is you're going to get a very big matrix. Huh? Each point, three, uh, three unknown. V, uh, U, V, and rotation. Each point gives you rotation. If you combine all four, Ashma, what is the final K matrix structure? Ashma. Uh, it should be nine. Nine, nine times nine. This is my answer. Chia, what is the answer? Each point give you three unknown. When you combine these three, what is the final K matrix size that you that you expect to see? Twelve. Sir. Twelve. Huh? The answer is twelve times twelve. Huh? Because you have twelve different parameter here. First point give you U one because just now you assign. Okay, you assign the unknown there. Okay. You should understand now why when you combine four points together, you'll get 12 times 12. Huh? So element one, you have V1, uh, U1, V1, rotation one, U2, V2, rotation two. Element two, you have V2, U2, V2, rotation two, U3, V3, rotation three. And 
element three, you have V3, uh, U3, V3, rotation three, U4, V4, rotation four. So this, the red color is what you issue the ticket. So how many ticket that you have been issued? Actually, you have 12 different ticket number. This is one set. One set. This one repeated, so we don't need to count. This one, one set. This one repeated, don't need to count. This one. So total, you have 12. Ashma, do you see it now? Why we have 12 yeah. times 12? Yeah. Ryan, do you understand why get 12 times 12? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So you understand why you get 12 times 12? Yes. Okay, good. So I don't need to go to, to teach you uh, how to park the number already. I think all of you are expert already. Okay, you combine, you get 12 times 12. So I'm going to show you the final answer. So after, I'm not going to write all the 12 times 12 matrix out, uh, but you do the calculation. Then after that, you apply the boundary condition. What I mean about the condition, you look at point 0.1. Point 0.1 at the wall, point 0.4 at the wall. What does it mean? It means U1, V1, rotation 1, 0. Same with point number 4. U1, V4, uh, rotation 4 means X direction movement don't have. Y direction movement don't have, no, do not have rotation. So one and four don't have, you can cancel. Lah. I mean, you can reduce, you 12 times 12, you can close the matrix, become six times six. Okay, I teach you how to close the matrix already previously. Okay, you close one and two and so on. Close using your pencil and then you have the remaining matrix. This one you, uh, we call it, uh, reduce set of equation. So one, two, three, four, five, six, you reduce six equation from 12 times 12, you reduce to six times six matrix. Then after that, you use F equal to KD. So you are, you are looking at uh, this equation. After you reduce uh, 12 times 12 to six times six, when you close uh, because you are closing uh, point one, U1, V1, rotation one, U4, uh, V4, rotation four. So you are seeing only point two and point three equation. So U2, V2, rotation two, V3, uh, U3, V3, rota rotation three. And then on the left hand side here is actually F2, uh, F2X, F2Y, and moment three sorry no moment two and same this one is f3x f3y and moment three so that's why you have a, a ten thousand here positive brian you understand why ten thousand is positive sign and not negative sign why this one positive sign Yes, sir. Why? The direction, sir. Direction parallel to what? X. Which X? There are lots of X prime, X prime here. To X prime, sir. Parallel to X prime? X. To X. Not Y. Parallel to this one, eh? Yes. Okay, so this one is... Okay, then the M3... Point number three, external force, 5,000, anti-clockwise positive sign. Eh? So after you solve that one, I put in all the numbers here. After you close the thing, you will see all this number. Okay, you have six equation to do. And I already, I already teach you how to use the online tools, the online matrix tools. So you do the transpose, you put this whole thing to left hand side, do the inverse matrix. Time this one, you get directly the six number here. Okay, you use the online tools that I teach you here. Okay, so Ashma, I think you 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 absent the class. You need to go and look back at the video huh? when I teach about the online tools. So it will save you a lot of time. Okay. All right. 
So what does it mean by negative? You have to understand. Huh? Negative because rotation always positive anticlockwise. You get a negative means rotation number two at point two will be clockwise and so on. And then you calculate the force. Force given by this equation, F prime equal to K prime TD. You recall the standard form of T. You, re you calculate the D just now. You put inside this uh, equation. Multiplication of equation. So you calculate the last two first. T times T, you get this equation. All right, T times T. You get this one and then you times the k k is this one the whole thing you need to calculate the whole thing so you calculate what is the value of c1 what is the value of c2 c1 c2 given by e ae divided by l c2 given you by ei divided by l cube so you calculate the value substitute inside there you get the k prime then you continue the calculation uh, by using the online tools eh? so after that you will get the whole whole set f prime and then you use the online calculator to help you you get f primes uh, matrix f prime you expand you'll get f f prime one x one y m one uh, m two and so on so from here you get what is your m prime and then you draw your free body diagram so for example for element one connecting f one x is negative so negative sorry uh, negative is going down because your x prime is going up so your f1 x negative means go against the x prime direction and so on okay so this one you spend some time to look into the the diagram that you see on the powerpoint slides basically it's quite direct huh? so for example this one F2Y negative, negative 49. So meaning at point two, where's the Y direction is this one. Huh? This is your Y prime. Huh? So it's negative, so it's going this way. All right. So you repeat the same I've done for the element one. You repeat for the same for element two, you get the same, convert into free body diagram. You repeat the same for element three, you get the F matrix, you draw it into free body diagram. Okay, with this, I end the lecture.